Hey YouTube, Dustin Ryder here with my review of Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel The Need for Speed, or Need for Speed. Speed. Speed's in there somewhere. So this was another very okay episode. That's kind of the story of the show, just being very okay. It was a Sarah-centric episode, primarily about her trying to break this hoverboard record, and she's, you know, very quickly passed up by Victor's antics, which are very clearly shady at the beginning of the episode. And so, like, the driving plot is she really wants to win, which results in her ultimately ending up with this speed star that one of the Galactic Ninjas has and using it to cheat to get the record. And that's, like, the primary drive of the episode. It's kind of like, I feel like for most of Super Ninja Steel, you'll see that scene. Like, that you know that scene. Within five minutes, you know what the moral's going to be. And as soon as that scene happens, the rest of the episode plays out in your head before the episode even plays out on your TV. Like, as soon as she found that star and had that look on her eye, like, I'm gonna put this in my board. I was like, okay, I already know what happens in an episode. It's gonna be a don't cheat, don't take the easy way out. You should just take the easy way out. I always do. It's so easy, Tom Haverford. That's where you should be learning lessons from. Um, but yeah, what I found funny about that actually was what, like, the way she found it was she was testing out a different method. Like, she had, like, this wingsuit, it looked kind of ridiculous, but it was working. She just, like, flew off and then happened to run into the monster and then battle and then the star dropped. So, like, what killed me about that is that <laughs> the only reason her other plan didn't work is because she doesn't have her damn feet strapped into the board. Like, hey, why not just use your other method, but, you know, strap in so you don't fly off the handle literally. Like, I thought that was dumb. Um, but I thought the whole thing was kind of dumb. I mean, it was just kind of, like, a generic lesson. Um, of, you know, don't take the easy way out, um, which is, again, it's kind of like a blanket advice that isn't necessarily, like, advice that should be used in every situation. I feel like this more would be better if it was represented as it's not as satisfying. Like, for example, when I was in middle school, there was a Dragon Ball game me and my friends were playing, and they were getting ahead of me and unlocking stuff, and I got impatient, so I just used the codes to unlock everything. And that didn't feel as satisfying because I didn't, you know, play the game and unlock it myself. But if I were to somehow stumble upon the way to get, you know, a math grade being an A without trying, I'm not going to say no to that because I really don't care about feeling accomplished about that. But in a case like this, this was like a personal interest. So I think it would have made it seem less morally cheesy if, you know, like they had made it more about... Um, like, you know, feeling accomplished. I guess my point with that, like, long-winded explanation is that, like I said, it would just make it seem less cheesy, like, it would still get the lesson across, but with something more relatable and tangible. But that was basically, like, the episode. Um, as far as things that were enjoyable, I think that, like, Sarah's actress does a good job of playing Sarah. Like, I like Sarah's personality. I think she does a good job of standing out as quirky. Uh, like, there were some really funny actions, interactions with her and Mick, and even though the context of it was classic GDPR stuff, like, the way she played it was, like, kind of charming. Like, she does a good job of that. It just makes me sad that they're underutilizing the characters. Like, I'd like to learn more about Sarah and maybe, like, have some sort of development or learn about her backstory instead of just, for honestly, for any of the characters, because none of them really either get a chance to change or I don't get a chance to learn anything about them. They're just used for vehicles to teach lessons. And that's like really annoying. And episodes like this kind of highlight that for me, when I can sort of see the potential in like what could be if we had like the chance to write her as a fun, quirky character that wasn't just trying to teach us not to stick a monster's blade in your board. That's what she said. Uh, but yeah, so that was kind of annoying, but like that was kind of a bright spot of it. Um, there was one funny line with Brody when that the monster was like giving all his puns and he's like, okay, we get it. That was like, First time I've laughed at anything in a while, but other than that, it was pretty generic stuff. The only other thing that I think is worth highlighting um, is at the end, Madame Odious seems to have some sort of plan for the Galactic Ninjas, which doesn't involve them actually being like, oh, these are super powerful mercenaries to attack the Rangers. It's more like, yeah, I'm expecting these guys to get destroyed. I don't know why she doesn't just kill them herself. Like, Oh, why don't you come work for us? Here, let's check out the stage. There's down your dead, and then she has the stars, but it's Power Rangers, so they wouldn't do that. But they could do a version of that from one of them, honestly. Like, I feel like Darkonda would have done something like that, or like a monster battle. That would be kind of cool, but whatever. But she wants them to get destroyed so she can get their stars. So I at least like that, again, they have a little bit of a, um, like a foreshadowing for a larger plot. 
Um, the Rangers did take note that, oh hey, this is the second Galactic Ninja, but let's never talk about it again. Also, they still never talked about that Heckle, you know, was undercover at the, the Dino Bite. Like, for real. They never had to talk about that. Like, they outed him, and then they never mentioned it. I'm still waiting. We're into Super Steel and Beast Morphers. I'm gonna be like, where's that Heckle talk? Um, anyway, but, so... I just kind of wish, like, this arc isn't going to be the standout, like, breakout story of Ninja Steel slash Super Steel, but it could be, like, a little bit more of a competent arc. Like, if the Rangers kind of acknowledged, like, oh, Madame Odious is sending these guys after us, you know, what's up with that? Why are they so elite? And then, you know, do the foreshadowing with Madame Odious, and then you can still do your stupid lesson-y stuff in the middle, but it kind of frames it as, like, this arc. I mean, it still is an arc, but it's just so loosely based. Like, we get, like, one line of foreshadowing by Madame Odious and the Rangers kind of noticing, like, oh, he's a Galactic Ninja too? Let's never talk about it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Um, and this is the last episode, no, second to last episode, excuse me, before the hiatus. Next week, next week? Next week is the last episode before the hiatus, and then we're going on hiatus till probably October, November? I can't remember what we usually go on, but so yeah, and I... Kind of doubt we're going to get the Blaze Megazord, so pretty much it's been mostly fillery stuff. Although we'll probably find out all about what's happening in the international airings. But overall, this was a very average episode. I would give it a 6. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe. It's Dawson Ryder, signing out.